Hey y'all, welcome back to Judy J TV. I told you guys I was about to be more active on my channel. No, I'm not in front of my YouTube backdrop yet, but it's coming. Y'all gotta procrastinate with me. I always procrastinate. Um, happy Black History Month. Y'all know I am mixed with black, French, Indian, Spanish, hell, everything. And I'm repping my heritage because it is Mardi Gras season. And you guys know I am mostly Louisiana Creole, which is a mixture of African American, Spanish, French, and Native American. My tribe is Choctaw Indian, so. <laughs> okay. And Pisces season is coming up, so I'm super excited. I'm super festive, and I'm ready to get it popping. My Creole shirt, I used to actually sell on my website, sojudyj.com, like years ago when I used to sell Miss Voodoo's too. But I have new products, so check it out, okay? <laughs> but I just wanted to come through and give you guys a life update on this video. So I'm praying nobody interrupts my call. Don't worry, y'all. I'm getting a new camera, too, for my birthday, actually. So bear with me on my iPhone, okay? Um, but yeah, happy Black History Month. I'm mixed as hell. I'm actually mostly French. Um, I did my ancestry DNA, but I rep all my nationalities. Everything that I mix with, I literally rep it. Um, I even have a little bit of Asian in me, so... On February 5th, it was actually the Chinese New Year. I'm not sure if I'm Chinese, Japanese, but I I would assume that I'm Chinese because I have like a super round face, well, before I got buckle fat removal, which I will be talking about, okay? Because everybody's like, oh my God, you got so much work done, but I really didn't. So let's get into my life update and shout out to all the African Americans for Black History Month and shout out to everybody who loves their heritage like I do because y'all know I'm Creole and I got the voodoo for these bitches till this day. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's get into it. I enrolled back in college. Um, I actually was in college before I made Bad Girls Club. I went to Columbia College, Chicago, and my major was broadcast journalism. So, like, television kind of fell into my lap. If y'all want to figure out how I made Bad Girls Club, my casting process, and everything, check out my videos. They're on my channel, okay? So, while I was going to college at Columbia College Chicago, which is actually one of the biggest media art schools in the nation, um, I lived in the heart of downtown, had so much fun. I miss college so much, actually. Um, but yeah, I was studying broadcast journalism, communications. And I made Bad Girls Club. So I kind of put college back on the burner because it's lit. And although I am still actively on television, my next show airs on the CW. Um, I made an appearance on Couples Court. I'm not like the plaintiff or defendant. I actually came in and gave expertise advice to a lesbian couple. And I'll get into that. How can I give advice to a lesbian couple? When did I become gay? Right? Okay. Anyway, I enrolled back in college for many reasons. The main reason is to honor my mom and my dad. They were both college graduates, got their master's degree, cared a lot about school. Another reason is because my ancestors worked way too hard for me not to go to college. You know what I'm saying? Like Martin Luther King didn't march for no reason for me to not care about school. You know what I'm saying? At one point in time, school was a privilege. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody could go to school. Not only that, but I'm an intelligent woman and I need medical insurance. You know what I'm saying? I was covered under my mother, Blue Cross Blue Shield for so long, but with all the medical and health things that have came up in my life, I would be stupid to not go to school to ensure that I have medical insurance because let's be real, television doesn't give you that. Television doesn't give you a lot. Television doesn't give you a 401k. You know what I'm saying? That's why so many people hop from television shows to television shows to try to stack the money to be able to just go in and pay 
your um your copay for your medical insurance or to try to stack to invest to have a 401k to have a retirement plan but none of that is guaranteed with television before my mother passed she was adamant on me making sure that i always had medical insurance you know what i'm saying i'm blessed enough to be able to pay it out my pocket but do I want to do that my whole life? Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? I want a retirement plan. I want a 401k. And I want to make sure I'm good. Even little Boosie, uh, he was diagnosed with cancer. And he talked about how important it was to have medical insurance. Okay, shout out to Boosie. Boo, Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? But for real though, like he had to come out of his pocket and pay $30,000 just to make sure he was able to survive cancer and continue to be here today. You know what I'm saying? And even Boosie was like, yo, it's very important because what if he wasn't a rapper? What if he wasn't blessed enough to have that money to be able to pay $30,000 for him to get his cancer removed? You know what I'm saying? It's a very serious thing. I don't think people think about like the long run. Yeah, you could go get nip tucked. You can go get surgery. But ultimately, a plastic surgeon... And a doctor cannot ensure your health, your survival, your anything. You know what I'm saying? So I want to make sure I'm tip-top shape all the time. I am. I just went to the doctor last Thursday, and I'm fine. But I want to ensure that I'm good. So to honor my parents, to honor my ancestors, and to make sure I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? If ever television comes to an end, y'all all see what's happening. Like, everything is online now. I want to make sure that I'm going to have a job regardless. You know what I'm saying? Um, not everybody is privileged enough to have a television platform that I was blessed with. And I thank God for that. But school matters. You know what I'm saying? So if anybody is just thinking they want to be like an Instagram thought or an Instagram model, what's that? You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, trust me, these people are still struggling. They may have millions of followers, but they don't have millions of dollars. And most of them are escorting. Most of them are Tatiana's bust down. And most of them are juicing niggas to get some money to be able to survive another day. For real. I don't want to be that girl. I want to be independent. Bow and arrow. You dig? Every time I shoot one arrow, I hit a million people, okay? But, um, Proverbs from Judy. <laughs> no, but for real though, um, I just want to make sure I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure I'm good. On top of that, the woman that I'm with right now, she worked very hard, graduated from school with a 4.0 and has a bomb job with a bomb salary. Salary, salary. I'm hungry. Actually, Uber Eats literally just dropped off some Popeyes. Eat. But, um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like she has a bomb job, a bomb salary and her job has so many benefits. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? That's what I want to do. Like, I want to make sure that I'm always good. Okay. Very smart. I'm not about to send any of my youngins off, go to school, finish it. And it's a wonderful accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can go get plastic surgery. Anybody can look good on the gram. Anybody can stunt. Anybody can suck a dick for some money. But not everybody is going to graduate school. That's a huge accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? It's something to still be very proud of. So yes, I enrolled in online um, courses at Ashford University. I have been wanting to go back to school for a long time just because I know that I'm intelligent and no, a paper, a piece of paper, a degree doesn't, you know, justify how smart you are, but it is an accomplishment. And my mother and my father didn't pay hella money for me to go to one of the biggest journalism schools in the nation, Columbia College, Chicago, for me just not to finish. You know what I'm saying? So I rolled back in online classes for many reasons. One, it's easier for me. I can be on the road. I can still get my classes done. I can still do my homework. I could be at home chilling. I have very bad anxiety. And I'm pretty popular from television. I wouldn't be able to focus, you know, going on a campus. Um, people would recognize me. I'm sure they wouldn't be able to focus. It's just not the T. You know what I'm saying? And now being a non-traditional college student is so... It's very um, normal nowadays, you know what I'm saying, to be a non-traditional college student. So 
I literally, I have my apps on my phone. I can do my homework wherever I'm at, the airport, traveling, the plane, in another country, wherever. There's no excuse. I'm getting my degree, okay? Um, I have a new book coming out. My first book was called Foo, Till Death Do Us Part. Foo is a French word. It means crazy. And I dedicated the book to my mom and my dad, Gervina May LeBlanc and William Ed Jackson. And all the proceeds went to lung cancer. So I didn't actually pocket any of the profit that I am still getting from my first book. Um, and my book didn't flop. Like it was in Walmart, it's still in Walmart, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, Wetpad, Amazon, any, any book platform that sells books. You can get my book for it. Um, yes, even in Walmart. Okay, you guys, Overstock, Fi, Fye.com, everywhere. Um, and it holds all of my poems. It holds my mother's Creole recipes from shrimp jambalaya to Louisiana crunch cake to pear cake um, to everything. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, it has my poems. It has some, some of my illustrations. I don't know if you guys know, but I can paint. I can draw. Um and I wanted to do something different than reality stars do. Reality stars tend to do tell-all books. And, you know, I wanted to really dive into my creative nature. I'm a whole artist, like a real artist. Not only do I do music, I do everything, okay? Um, and it's all a part of my first book. So if you guys still want it, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. And as stated, it has my poems, my illustrations, my mother's Creole recipes, and it is actually an imagination book. It came from my imagination. And I talked about real life imagery in it though, like from my dad's Cadillac to the scent of his cologne, um, to real stuff that I've experienced down in Louisiana when I would go during the summer, you know, and for holidays. It's about two girls. One of them is Haitian and one of them is Louisiana Creole. I always get the question, am I Haitian? No, I am Louisiana Creole. And I stated before, it's mostly a mix of French, Indian, my tribe, Choctaw, um, African American and Spanish, like from Spain, Spain, Spain. Um, so I distinguished the two. One of the girls is Haitian and one of the girls is Louisiana Creole. Uh, one of their names is Summer, the other is Abella, and it's a, it's a thriller book. It's a romantic thriller, and it's awesome, like if I don't say so myself. But my new book that is coming out is called uh, The Memoir of a Crazy Creole because everybody always asks me, like, write a book about yourself. You know what I'm saying? I've been through a lot. I'm a complex person. I pride myself on being unique and different. So this book is going to dive deep into like everything I've been through leading up to my next chapter that I'm about to embark on the thirties. You know what I'm saying? So I talk about like me getting kicked out of Catholic school. I talk about me going through my tumors. I talk about me losing my parents. I talk about a lot of stuff. I even went to a mental institute for like a week because I threatened to drown myself at summer camp. Was I ever really going to drown myself? No, because let's think about it. You float back to the top unless you have something weighing your foot down. And I was literally like 11. I was tired of stuff. I was emotional. I'm a Pisces. You know what I'm saying? I have a lot of feelings. I write a lot of stuff. And I say a lot of things that I don't mean. Hence, on season 13, when I threatened to burn the house down and kill everybody. Was I really going to do it? No. <laughs> or, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm a very emotional person, okay? I'm an artist. I express myself. So, when I said that at summer camp, people took it seriously, as they should. And they called my mother. And I went to Kankakee Mental Institute for like a week. But after that week, everybody called my parents and was like, nothing's wrong with her. We just think that she just says a lot of stuff that she doesn't mean. And I'm still that girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I talk about everything that I experienced in the mental institute, y'all. It was a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was a lot. So I really dive deep into everything that I've been through in my life and how I truly felt during those moments, in those dark moments. It's going to be a really poetic book, but I, I'm going to, I feel like there's a lot of things that even my fans don't know about me. A lot of people assume about me. So this book, The Memoir of a Crazy Creole, is 
going to be lit and I'm super excited about it. I'm going to do a book tour just like my, uh, my first book. Um, it made a lot of outlets, like all the news, like ABC seven, CBS, like it's all on my Instagram. You guys can definitely check it out. I'm going to do a book signing, all that stuff. So yes, I'm almost done with my second published book. I'm an author. Ding, ding, ding. Um, I hope I shaved. I did. <laughs> okay. I had a photo shoot today and I hope you guys love it. I channeled Lucille Ball because I grew up watching her shows, her sitcoms, and I love, I love Lucy and I'm funny like her. I pride myself on being a natural comedian and she did it. If you watch her biographies, she did it so naturally. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people try to be funny and they're not funny. And I just feel like I'm naturally funny. I love Lucy literally. And the pictures came out bomb. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's my Valentine's Day shoot for this year. So yes. Um, plastic surgery. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, you got so much work done. No, I didn't. And if you guys remember on season 13, I literally was talking about what I wanted done. And everything that I said on season 13 that I wanted done, I wanted my cheeks sucked out and I wanted a nose job. I ended up getting. You guys, I wanted plastic surgery. Well, not plastic surgery, but I wanted the hump shape. You know, I'm I'm Indian. I had a hump on my nose. It was beautiful. But me, I was insecure with it, which is why I always wore shades so it could cover like the hump. If you guys didn't know, that's some tea. Why I always was in shades is because it covered my hump. Um, even back in high school, I was always big on like MySpace, Tag, Crush Spot, all of the, you know, popping websites then. And I would always take pictures, you know, back then it was Polaroid cameras and you know, you couldn't check the picture to see if you liked it. You just had to go turn in the camera and pray that once they get developed, you like your pictures. You know what I'm saying? And even back in high school, like I would see my side profile and I hated the hump on my nose. You know what I'm saying? So that has been a dream forever for me to get a nose job. My mother knew about it. Um, and I'm French. My grandma, straight French, Delta Dia. Um, my mom's last name is LeBlanc. I said it before, uh, which means white in French. But on my, my Creole side, we come with humps on our noses. And that's mainly from Indian. But a lot of French people have, you know, it's uh, it's European. So, you know, it's a it's a... It's a feature, you know what I'm saying? And it's beautiful, beautiful. But I was insecure with it. And the career that I have in television, I just wanted a better side profile for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so my mother knew about it, obviously. Not only did she know since high school, but I announced it on television on season 13. So all I did was get my hump shaved off my nose. I didn't get like anything done other than that. And I also got the buckle fat removed from my face, which is why I have more of a contoured oval face rather than like a jiggly puff like round face. But that's it. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, you got so much work done. I really didn't. I got the hump shaved off my nose and buckle fat removal. And I spoke about it on season 13. I wanted it done. My mother has been knowing about it, that I wanted this done. Um... I wanted a Brazilian butt lift, but let's be honest. Could you guys picture me like being a Brazilian butt lift girl? It's just not me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't take pictures of my ass out. I mean, have I before? Yes. But every picture on my Instagram isn't my booty. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a butt model. I pride myself on being full of personality and full of fun. You know what I'm saying? So I just felt like me getting a Brazilian butt lift, just, it just wouldn't be me. And I lost the weight anyway. So I feel better about myself anyway. And that would just bring unwanted attention. I want people to really like me for me and not for what's like behind me and what shit comes out of, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get it. Like it stinks <laughs> like, butt stink. What the fuck? Like it's shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. But it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? But it just wasn't me. And on top of that, like, I have boobs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like my tits. I like to feel, getting my nipples sucked. No shade to anybody that does got, you know, boob jobs and butt jobs. Like, you know, that's y'all. You know, do what makes you happy. One life, you know what I'm saying? Live it up. Do what makes you happy. But it just wasn't me. And because of all my health complications that I've had throughout life, 
it just would have been something extra I would have to worry about. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, you guys. Um, all I got was my hump shaved off my nose and buckle fat removal. If you Google buckle fat removal, there's even a picture of me. Sarah Oliver just like texted me the picture the other day and she was like, girl, look how crazy this is. I just found your buckle fat remover picture. I'm like, damn. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So everybody's like gay. What? When did you become gay? I personally don't think I'm gay. I don't put labels on people. I believe who you love is who you love. It's a soulful thing. Y'all know me. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. I love Lucy. You did. Oh, uh, no, but for real. Um, so how that happened was she came into my life when my father was in hospice and my mother got diagnosed with lung cancer. Well, it was actually before my father was in hospice. Um, it was before my father and my mother took ill and before she was diagnosed with lung cancer. She came in my life like a week before my mother got diagnosed with lung cancer. And I believe the universe makes no mistakes. And God puts people in your life, places people in your life when you need them the most. And to be honest, like, she came in my life as a friend. Her name is Ashley. She came into my life as a friend. And before I knew it, I had other feelings for her. She made sure I was good. Like literally, she made sure I ate. She helped me pack up my house in Olympia Field. She was so nice to my mother. She would take me to the hospital when I was too drunk and too emotional to deal with stuff myself. She came to my father's memorial, my mother's memorial. She's always around my family. And before I knew it, yeah, I got other feelings for her. And before my mother passed, my mother literally told her to take care of me and to make sure that I was good. And she has, like, to this day. Um, she's a phenomenal woman. She also, like, influenced me to get back in school to finish. Like I said, she graduated with a 4.0. Um, she has a great job. And she just keeps me grounded. She doesn't follow blogs. She's not a bad girl fan. She literally just likes me for me and she keeps me grounded. So when I'm online and chirping and looking at the blogs and all dramified and stuff, I could text her and she just brings me back to peace. You know what I'm saying? And makes me remember what really matters in life. And it's not these blogs. It's not these fan pages. It's not television. It's not fame. It's somebody who truly cares about you and your well-being. And that's who she was and who she still is to this day. So it's not really that I turned gay. Oh, and she's a um a 19 week billboard charting artist. Like she works very hard to invest into her craft. And she's just an all around great person, like for real. And her mother is sick, so we have a lot in common. Like her mother has MS, so she knew what I needed. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, my mother told me, be nice to her, Judy. Um, my family doesn't care. And my mother also told her to take care of me until this day she has. You know what I'm saying? So I have the utmost respect for her. Do I consider myself gay? No. When a pretty girl walks by, am I like, oh my God, you're so pretty. Yeah. I give girls compliments. But am I looking at her ass or looking at her vagina like, mm, what that do? What that taste like? Like, no, I'm definitely not gay. I'm not even bisexual, but I guess I am since I date girls and men. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. It's 2019. <laughs> Grown ass men are turning into women. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't care. Whatever floats your boat. You dig? But um, yeah. Do I want kids? Absolutely. But I need to like, like y'all, like having kids is not a goal. You know what I'm saying? Like I try to preach to the youth that having kids should be a blessing and you should be financially ready for kids. You know what I'm saying? Like you shouldn't try to secure a bag off of another man, have his baby. So you're set. You know what I'm saying? Like Having a kid is a big responsibility. And I feel like now, like so many of my little fans always ask me like, when are you going to have a baby? As if like, that's a goal. I'm only 29. You know what I'm saying? I plan on having a baby in my thirties, like maybe even 35. You know what I'm saying? I still have a lot of goals that I want to accomplish. 
I'm not even who I want to be yet. I'm not even who I'm going to be yet. You know what I mean? So I just want to preach to the youth like, yes, I do want kids. And kids should be a blessing and not a goal. You should be more than ready to provide for your kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mom and my dad made sure I was straight my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like, even to this day, my parents aren't physically here, but spiritually they are. And they are still making sure that I'm good in my life. And that's what I want to give to my kids. I don't ever want to see them struggle. I don't ever, I just, I how I grew up, I want to make sure my kids grow up like that. You know what I'm saying? So right now I'm not done living for me. But am I going to have kids? Absolutely. Am I going to have them with the girlfriend that I'm with now? Who knows? There's adoption. There's many ways you could have kids with same sex. You know what I'm saying? Like freezing eggs, like all types of stuff. But Having kids is a blessing. I'm not in a rush. I still have many things I want to accomplish in life. And I'm chilling. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, don't rush to have a baby. Like, travel the world. Fall in love. Try new foods. There's so many other things that you could do with your life besides popping out some kids. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. Like, let's get it together, y'all. Um, My birthday is coming up. I'm about to be 30. I'm flying into South Korea. I'm super excited about it. Like I said, I have like a little bit of Asian in me um, from Ancestry DNA. Y'all need to go get y'all Ancestry DNA because there's so much that I mixed with that I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? You guys might be surprised how mixed you are or how much you have running in your veins. Okay. Um, I fly into South Korea. I travel by myself. Check out my hashtags online. Hashtag... A trip with Judy, a sip with Judy, and a bite with Judy. Um, I've been wanting to go to Asia forever, and I'm going on a group trip, but I am flying there by myself. I fly into South Korea. My dad actually fought in the Korean War, so it's going to be liberating to like experience South Korea. Even for a layover, I'm going to try some bomb Korean food. And then I'm going to Thailand, and I'm going to Bangkok, Fifi Islands, and fuck it. So I'm super excited. I picked my excursions. Follow me on Snap. Look at my hashtags. Y'all know I'm going to go nuts. Um, and I just want to bring in my 30th birthday really chill. You know what I'm saying? Um, on some Buddha stuff. I know I talked about that in my last video. But yeah. Um, I also am gearing up to do a huge business venture. Okay? Um, it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I love food. Um and my people down here, my partners down here in the A are actually gearing up to help me with it. They are phenomenal business people. And like I said, the universe makes no mistakes. And there was no mistake when I met them. <clears throat> They've been more than wonderful to me. They actually became my family. And they are from Shreveport, Louisiana. And my family is from like Lake Charles, Louisiana and Iota, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, you know. So we have a lot in common when it comes to food and when it comes to repping for the Saints. Y'all could check out my Super Bowl video that I posted. Um, and they are just amazing. So we're getting the business plans together and I feel like it's going to be a great business venture. Um, also, to honor our love for food, our Louisiana heritage, our Louisiana roots, um, and, you know, Chicago, where I was raised at, got some of the best food in the world. Actually, it's the city with the best food, okay? You can't find my sauce anywhere. Mild sauce. Make sure you ask for it when you go to Chicago, okay? Deep dish, Maxwell's Polishes. I don't even want to go there. But, yeah, I love food, okay? It's in my genes. It's in my roots. You know what I'm saying? So, we're doing it the Louisiana way. And I don't want to say too much, but... This is about to be a big deal for me in my life. And I pray that it's going to pop. Knock on wood. You know what I'm saying? I don't see how it can. not It's here in Atlanta. It's going to be bomb. And y'all know I have my hot sauce. Um, my first hot sauce flavor, my original flavor, was released in 2016. And I released Chipotle last year, last Cinco de Mayo. And I'm gearing up to do a verde sauce. But this one is taking a while because I'm actually um, infusing it with THC. So it's going to be a little bit different, but it's totally me. And I have a plethora of hot sauces, flavor hot sauces that I want to, you know, release. Uh, it's called Judy's Voodoo Juice. 
And I have a ton of products, you guys. So make sure you go to S-O-J-U-D-I-J-A-I.com. Um, I love it. Like, I just love it. So that's where I'm at. I live in Atlanta right now. I live in Camp Creek area uh, in Atlanta. And I love it. It was the smartest decision I made. Um, you know, my mother passed away from lung cancer. So I'm so thankful by the grace of God that I had time to talk to her and to plan for what was going to happen if she didn't beat cancer. And unfortunately she didn't, but she did. She fought. She did beat cancer. It was her choice. You know what I'm saying? God called her. Um, she's a beautiful angel. My mother was one of the most beautiful women and is going to be always one of the most beautiful women that has ever walked this earth, okay, as a human being. Um, but we had time to plan and to talk about it. I chose to move to Atlanta. You know, I lived in Atlanta in like 2013 at Buckhead. But my mother drove me and my personal assistant down here from Chicago. That was my first time moving out of the state of Illinois. I had many apartments like in college, but th that was my first big move, you know. Um, and then I went home because me and my personal assistant fell out. You know, I was the one that signed the lease. I was the one with the good credit and... I'm just warning y'all, be careful who y'all live with and sign leases with and stuff because if their name isn't on the dotted line, they're not going to care, for real. But thank God I got that handled. But the universe makes no mistake because when I moved back home, my mother had like a year and a half left before she was diagnosed with lung cancer, you know, and it actually was bone cancer, but the doctors were prescribing it as arthritis. So... Always get a second opinion. Don't always believe like what the doctor says because sometimes they're wrong. You guys have to remember they're human beings too. You know what I'm saying? But I'm so thankful I moved back to Chicago because me and my mother had a phenomenal year and a half together. Um, she retired. We used to go to massages. We used to go out to eat. Like we love food. We, we love food. My mother was a phenomenal cook. Hence why I put her recipes in my first book. Um, and we used to try out the recipes. And if we liked it, we would put, save them. And if we didn't like them, we would toss them. But, um, you know, and that even goes back to like my grandma. Like she used to make cantaloupe pies, sweet potato pies, like and make her own crust and stuff. So food is very heavy in my life. You know what I'm saying? Even on my dad's side. My sister, Michelle, she has her own catering business in Chicago on the south side called Hot Off The Racks Catering. So I am stemmed with like good food on both sides. Um, but me and my mom, we were very close. That will always be my best friend. Um, Y'all know I used to cry about her on, on TV and stuff. Like I love my mom, you know, and I feel like I'm making her proud. But yes, we had time to talk about... Um, what I was going to do or my plans. And I chose Atlanta because I do have family here, my mom's side and my dad's side. Some of them both are here and it's very cheap to live here, but it's also black Hollywood. So on my downtime, when I'm not on TV, I'm still busy. Like it's still the industry. You know what I'm saying? I'm always invited to events. Do I go? Sometimes no. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yes. I'm not really like a hype like that. You know, I feel like it's super fake and I pride myself on being super real. So I avoid a lot of industry stuff, but sometimes I pop out. But all in all, it's a city that is not very slow and it's a great place to buy your first home. I am one of the best investments I ever made was buying my first home. So, yes, I am a homeowner, a first time homeowner. And um, do I plan on staying here forever? Somebody called my phone very annoying. So annoying just pissed me the hell off. I might call them and cuss them out. But do I plan on staying in Atlanta forever? No. Um, I actually, my heart is in Florida, Miami. I love Florida. But I also love Arizona too. And I have family in both places. I have family a lot of places. Um, everybody always asks me, why didn't I move to LA? Well, it's super expensive to stay there. And why go broke living in like a one bedroom apartment when I could just buy a whole house for myself down in the A? You know what I mean? Um, so that's what I did. And the weather is great. I love rain. Um, there's no earthquakes. You know what I'm saying? There's like no tornadoes. It was just a very smart move and one of the best moves I ever made uh, in my life. So I know my parents would be very proud of me. But yeah, you guys, that's my update. 
Sorry, my throat is dry. Y'all know. Um, no, it's not cigarettes. Um, but that's where I'm at. You know, I'm down here in the A. I'm cooling it. My next show, Couples Court on the CW. Check your local listings. It airs uh, this Friday. Well, not tomorrow, but next Friday, uh, February 15th. And I'm dropping my book. I'm kicking off a big venture. My hot sauce, my products are on my website. And I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm good. A lot of times people try to make it out for me, make me out to be something that I'm not. And yeah, I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy, crazy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed. I'm thankful. Every day is a new day. I'm just pushing for it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can't wait to graduate. It's going to be a huge accomplishment. I'm already thinking about my graduation dress and <laughs> my graduation shoot for the grand. You know what I mean? But I love you guys, and I'm down here with my dog, Gumbo, and, you know, I'm okay. So, I hope you guys are okay. I hope you guys have a blessed, blessed day. I hope you guys are doing something today that your future self will thank you for. Don't be sent off by all these Instagram people because, trust me, they're paying rent and they broke broke. Don't be fooled by their followers because that does not amount the bank account for them, Okay. Um, or that ain't how much money they got in their bank account. No shade, but I'm just going to keep it real. I'm not going to send y'all off. Okay. And do what makes you happy. You only got one life to live or do you reincarnation? Don't get me started, <laughs> but, um, I'm okay. So thank you guys for sticking with me through my ups and downs, my fatness, my not being fat, like all of it. Um, and I'll probably think of more stuff that I could have updated, but that's what this channel is for. Make sure you guys subscribe. I love you guys. And oh yeah, and make sure you tune into my podcast because they're dope and I talk about a lot of stuff. I'm actually way more intelligent than people try to give me credit for, okay? But I'm crazy and I will cut you. <laughs> I love you. Mwah.